In today's video, we're taking a look at the latest trade rumors from around the NHL. Are the Pittsburgh Penguins changing their tune and turning their attention to the Calgary Flames in defense of Noah Hannafin, or is an Eric Carlson trade still something they're working on and still a possibility? We have some other Flames players we're going to take a look at as well, including uh, Michael Backlund, Danny Vladar, and he could the former first overall pick of the New York Rangers, Alexi Lafreniere, possibly get an offer sheet and could a team try to lure him away to the tight cap situation in the Big Apple? We'll discuss that possibility and what team might do it coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot to cover today. Some of the various trade rumors around the league. It's been a fairly busy news cycle as well. Lots of RFA signings. In case you missed it earlier, I put out a video a few hours back looking at a bunch of signings today uh, and included guys uh, from the Habs, Leafs, the Wild, uh, some arbitration news as well. Uh, Philip Gustafson came to terms today as well with the Minnesota Wild on a three-year deal. Uh, the Habs and Leafs each signed some of their prospects. Um, and of course, uh, um, Kevin Ball in New Jersey also came to terms. We found out as well that Troy Terry and, and the Ducks were heading for arbitration here in the next day or two, uh, as well as also extremely far apart with the Ducks. They're three and a half million dollars difference on their contract negotiating uh, requests. So uh, that one's likely heading for arbitration, I would think as well. Now, I know there's no benefit in arbitration to really you know, uh, go as close as you think you're going to need to. Like, it's not like some other sports where the uh, arbitrator picks one version or the other. The NHL arbitrators are allowed to pick any number they want that they feel is fair and justified for a contract. So, um, you know, on the duck side of it, though, they're not even at the salary cap floor yet. They still need to sign Troy Terry, Trevor Zegras. Um, you would think they wouldn't be so stingy with Terry, who has been with the organization for some time and has really come on the last couple of years. I'm a little bit surprised. I'm not surprised there's a gap, but I am surprised on just how big the gap is. We should have lots more arbitration news uh, here in the next couple of days. Jeremy Swayman, Trent Frederick as well, uh, and Boston should have their situations dealt with shortly where we should have the Swayman um, result, I would hope, tomorrow afternoon. So we will should have more news around that stuff here in the next couple of days to talk about as well. But I do want to turn our attention to the Calgary Flames. Now, we know the Flames are a team that have a bunch of pending unrestricted free agents. They traded Tyler to Foley, but guys like Michael Backlund, Noah Hannafin, Danny Vladar are still very much in play um, at this point. And Elias Lindholm certainly at the top of that list as well, uh, mainly because of the fact that they don't seem interested in re-signing. We know for sure that Noah Hannafin has informed GM Craig Conroy that he doesn't want to extend in Calgary, uh, wants to go back to the U.S. to play. We have heard from uh, different sources indicating that Elias Lindholm has told the Calgary Flames that he doesn't want to re-sign right now. And they've reportedly had a, a mega extension on the table for him. And Michael Backlund has said that I wouldn't say that based on his words he didn't say that he was completely like not for sure ever resigning he didn't want to do it right now he's he said they would maybe reconsider at the end of the year which doesn't sound promising uh, but they had a tough season uh, I think things were very strained under Daryl Sutter and it certainly led to a lot of their issues and I know Mackenzie Weger who was a newcomer to the Flames last year stepping into that situation recently did an interview on a podcast and was pretty open and talking about the fact about how some things went down and some of the tough times they went through and uh, the fact that the room and the players were pretty close. It was just a major disconnect with the coach is what it really sounded like. Uh, Daryl Sutter uh, did not have a, a lot of support. Obviously, he had his guys there that you know were used to him. Uh, you know, Toffoli and Lewis and a few of these guys, Lucic, had all played for him before. Um, so I, th I think they maybe had a better relationship with him, but he certainly, Uyghur made it known to Michael Backlund and Sutter had a poor relationship and had a lot of screaming matches and just were always yelling at each other. It just was not a healthy situation whatsoever. Now, we, we haven't heard a ton on Backlund as far as being linked to other teams. Uh, obviously, he's still a productive player, even though he's a bit older. Really good two-way centerman, uh, good leader, good character guy. Lots to like about his game. Uh, doesn't have an outrageous contract, and he only has one year left. So if, if the Flames seriously want to trade him, I don't really think they're going to have any issues doing so. I just think it's a matter of 
you know, they don't want to pull the trigger on hoping that they might find a way to convince them to stay. Now, it's believed as well, based on the comments from Uyghur, that the team really wanted Macklin to be captain last year. Obviously, Daryl Sutter and the Flames did not name a captain. They've been without one for a couple of years now since the departure of former captain Mark Giordano. Um, you know, and sometimes you can go a little while without one if it's not obvious or clear who that next person should be. But in some cases, it makes a difference for a team to have, uh, you know, the leadership group uh, clearly defined and have roles clearly defined instead of just doing it by a larger committee. So obviously, you know, Backlund's been there a long time and then with, through, with the Flames through some good times and bad times. And uh, he was very interested in being captain as well as a lot of his teammates were, you know, thinking he deserved and should have the C on his jersey as well. And it never came. And that's obviously not the only issue he had. A lot of it was, uh, you know, the other antics by Sutter that are well documented here. But at the same time, uh, back like I said, he's made it clear he's not interested in re-signing right now. And he may reconsider at the end of the year, but he wants to see how things go. Probably wants to see how things go with the new coach. What's the direction of this team? It's in you know undergone some some more changes again. The last two years we've seen a lot of change, especially not as drastic this off season as the one before, but still, um, you know, and he will maybe reconsider. But at the point that we are now, um, it's quite likely that you know Backlund could be traded. But if he's gonna stay, uh, it certainly sounds like that they're gonna need to offer him a contract that obviously that he feels is you know acceptable but i think being the captain is going to have to be part of that and we don't know we're all everything you know everybody in the organization how everybody feels about that um so we'll see where things go but if backland is is not traded then that's going to be part of keeping them and i don't know how that's going to go when it comes to like uh hannafin and vladar uh, i do have uh, a new source of information uh talking about the flames and this source has been right in the past, so I do want to give them some credit here that they're likely on to something, but uh, indications are that the Flames and the Penguins actually had some pretty intensive uh, trade conversations at the NHL draft involving Noah Hannafin at that point. That was actually a package deal involving Hannafin and Danny Vladar. We know Vladar is likely going to get moved by the Flames, if not by the start of the season, then soon enough, uh, because they're going to go with Markstrom and Wolf as their goaltending tandem. I think that's pretty obvious, pretty clear. No surprises there. Um, so the Penguins, of course, had some big goaltending decisions to make. This was before, uh, of course, Dubas signed Tristan Jerry. Um, it sounds like they were you know, they had some good conversations. I don't know that they were like super close, but they were certainly sounding like things were progressing quite well, getting close to a deal. Uh, and it sounds like a lot of the assets that were potentially going to be involved in that trade with Calgary are the same sort of deal or assets they were going to need if they can do an Eric Carlson trade. I think at the time, I don't know that Kyle Dubas was as confident in a Carlson trade. And I think over the course of the couple of days, things started to shift. I think he started to feel more confident that he could pull off a Carlson trade, which I think probably helped him be a little bit more reluctant to complete that deal with the Peng- with the Flames sorry, uh, on Hannafin. And a lot of those same assets were being used. So I'm assuming they're probably looking at if possibly a first round pick, you're probably looking at, you know, maybe a, maybe a Marcus Pedersen in there um, or Ty Smith or some of the same sort of assets that the Sharks are going to want to be looking for. So he pulled back and walked away from a potential deal. And now the source is saying that the Penguins and the Flames have re-engaged on a Hannafin trade talk. Now, at this point, Vladar doesn't make sense for, for Pittsburgh anymore. So if they do get back together here on a potential trade, it's not going to be the same. It's going to have to be different. Um, now, Hannafin does make a lot of sense for the Penguins. They clearly want a uh, offensive puck-moving defenseman who can help out from the back end. He fits that description. Would he be willing to extend in Pittsburgh? I'm not sure. I would think maybe. Uh, obviously, all we know is that he wants to go back to the U.S. and be closer to home. Um, you know, obviously, like I said before, I think the Bruins are going to, I'll be shocked if he doesn't end up in Boston at some point, but doesn't mean that for sure that's going to happen. But at the end of the day here, this deal could make sense for Pittsburgh. Now I, it's been believed as well that the flames, if they're going to move Hannafin want ideally a winger, uh, who could replace Tyler to production or at the very least a top nine forward. Um, you know, it could be, a, it could be somebody who plays center it doesn't have to be a winger, but a you know a top nine forward who can produce 
uh, decent offensively and maybe have a similar contract, possibly even less money as well, depending on obviously the whole you know um, parameters of the deal. From a cap perspective, things might have to be a little bit different, but um, that's kind of what they're looking at. So we'll see. Now this you got to remember, there's obviously a lot of cat and mouse games between general managers. We know that Dubas has been heavily engaged with the Sharks on Carlson for an extended period of time now since the draft or even before a little bit. And if they're getting a little bit antsy, they're trying to bring the Sharks price down. I wouldn't be shocked to find out that they're having some of these conversations and want the Sharks to know about it as a way to hopefully get them to come back and lower the price. It could be more for those purposes. Not to say that there isn't legit interest in Hanfin. I really believe there is. I just believe that the interest in Carlson is still the primary focus. So, like I said, it could be a, a bit of a game to get the Mike Greer and the Sharks to make an adjustment on their price. If they get a little bit concerned that Pittsburgh's going to walk, we already know that Carolina likely is out of it now after signing Tony D'Angelo. They've got a pretty full blue line. I, you know, could they still do it? Maybe. I don't think it makes sense. I never thought it made sense for them in the beginning. So you're really down to the Penguins. If the Penguins can't do it, not to say that there isn't other teams that would want to, or I just think it'd be more challenging and they'd be starting over. I I just really don't think the Sharks probably don't want to lose Kyle Dubas and the Penguins interest here. So this could be a negotiated employee in a sense to get them to lower their price. But we'll see. If all else fails, it totally makes sense that Noah Hannafin is like plan B for Kyle Dubas and the Penguins on the back end. And he could even play top pair minutes with Latang, where he's a lefty and a righty. So it could even work just as good or better, maybe. Of course, we don't know what Carlson's going to be capable of moving forward. If he can play like he did last year, obviously he's the better option to generate even more offense so we'll have to see how this all goes down but certainly i know carlson and mike greer uh, i'm not sure if they're having regular conversations or not but it sure sounds like carlson doesn't want to go back to san jose he wants this deal done i don't know if greer is feeling pressured at all or not but it's certainly getting to that point now where we're only a short time here very short time from it being august and clearly you know, we're going to start getting into the home stretch of, you know, training camps and all that, and things need to get done. So we'll have to see. But I do suspect that Hannafin and Vladar both very likely to get dealt, and I would not be shocked if the uh, Penguins are a potential landing spot for Hannafin. I would think at this point that they'd have to move Casey to Smith if they could, you know, possibly come back and ask for Vladar in a trade as well. But that just gets that much more complicated, another team involved, and I don't know how easy or difficult that would be. So either way, those are all your updates on Hannafin, Vladar, and Backlund. Not much new information out there right now on Elias Lindholm, as I've mentioned before. The Bruins make a ton of sense, but not easy to pull off. I don't know if they have the assets to satisfy the Flames. Some people have said Jake DeBrusque would be a starting point and it would have to be Jake plus something else. So we'll see where that goes. Uh, Also some news uh, potentially on teams considering offer sheeting Alexi Lafreniere. I've seen numerous articles and about different teams. The latest one was actually to me that made more sense was the San Jose Sharks. Now this was not a rumor from an NHL insider. This was just an article from a like a speculation, I guess you could say, from a hockey writer suggesting that the Sharks do this. Uh, we know San Jose is looking for um, you know players to retool and kind of you know take this team in a new direction. They picked up Philip Zadina, who was not the same level as Lafreniere, but still, uh, you know, he's a player who was a high pick and is looking to rejuvenate his career and get things back on track, one out of Detroit. We don't know that Lafreniere wants it of New York, and we're not saying that. But at the same time, I'm sure he's got to be somewhat frustrated with his lack of opportunity. Uh, That much we could probably say without actually hearing it from him. He's been a third-line player, not getting a lot of power play time, and not really getting the, the, the reps that he was probably hoping he would buy now. So would a team like San Jose be able to swoop in and offer sheet him? Now, the Rangers have... Basically, on cap friendly, it says 2.2, but it also shows them having eight defensemen on there. A couple of them are, are waivers um, exempt, um, or even if they weren't, it doesn't matter. Like You can move a defenseman down to the minors without much trouble. Uh, they could easily get to $3 million. No problem. And that would give them 12 forwards, 
uh, including Lafreniere, and seven defensemen, two goaltenders. So they would be basically one player short, being Lafreniere's contract of having a complete full roster, and it could carry uh, 22 players. Now, um, well, 21 or 22, depending on the exact players, whoever they demote down. But Lafreniere at this point would be under $3 million uh, on his AAV, which may not even be that unfair to be honest. But if teams want to offer sheet because they could push it up a little bit like you see Montreal do with Aho and Kakaniemi in Carolina, if they wanted to offer, say, 4.29, which is like the cutoff before the compensation goes up again, the compensation for uh, the, an accepted offer sheet is only a second-round pick. Like, really, would the Sharks pay him on a one-year deal, 429 and give up a second for him? I think they'd do that in a heartbeat. I think any team would. Most teams would, anyway. If they want to get up over between 5 to $6 million to really make it tough on the Rangers, then you're talking a first and a third-round pick for compensation. That gets a lot more complicated. Now, the Sharks are one of the teams out there, though, that do have their all their picks. So they could certainly be in a position to do it. They have the space. They have over $5 million in space right now. So they could go that high. They could probably easily create a little bit more. We don't know if this Eric Carlson trade is going to go down. If it does, it's obviously going to free up more space as well because uh, they'd likely end up with a, a positive net game and cap space out of that deal. Even if they retain some, they'd be move, losing more than they're getting, taking on. Uh, so they'd have more room as well. So, you know, they could have more flexibility if that trade actually takes place and they do move that massive contract off the book. So it, it makes sense. Now, will the Rangers match it? Would they be forced to uh, to make you know a move? They, they certainly would be. I mean, I think the Rangers would probably do everything they could to match it. But, it, you know, they might be forced to move another player who you might be able to get your hands on. So, no matter what, I know teams are weary and reluctant to do this because they feel like they're going to be targeted next if they do it. There's like this unspoken, unwritten code around the NHL. We've seen Montreal and Carolina go tit for tat against each other in recent years. Otherwise, it never seems to happen. But at the end of the day, I don't know why teams don't use this more. It's a great tool at their disposal. He's a former first-round pick, and I think if you give him a solid top six chance with some better uh, line mates that are a little bit more experienced, I think he could possibly break right out and take off and be the player that you thought he could be. Why, you know, why not overpay him for a year and only give up a couple of draft picks to do it? To me, it could be a game changer for your franchise. Like I said, San Jose is the perfect team to take that chance. In my opinion, I don't know that they'd want to move a first rounder though. Is the only thing. So they might want to go with a second round pick cut off of four two nine, which would be a little bit easier for the Rangers to match. But Either way, an interesting concept. I don't know that there's there's a few other teams out there lower in the standings that could do it if they really wanted to, like Anaheim, Chicago probably. But there hasn't been much mentioned about them pulling one of those offer sheets out of the bag to make things interesting. But a team like the Sharks, we've heard Montreal, although I don't see them doing it. They'd have a tough time cap space-wise and with their picks and everything. I don't think Montreal could do it. But a team like San Jose, to me, makes a ton more sense. Or do you think the Rangers and Lafreniere will get a deal done soon enough and this is not going to be an option? Or will the Rangers do everything they can to match if it was something that did come up? Let me know your thoughts on that down in the comments. We'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with the latest news, rumors, and analysis of all 32 NHL teams. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Hello.